All right, guys. You seem to really enjoy these, so we're going to dive back into some Starve Harve today. This is ruining Roman history with bad translations. Now, I've acknowledged to you guys before that while I have a very fascinating interest in the history of the Roman Empire, it's not an area that I know a ton about. Uh, so I'm interested to see if I'm able to decipher any of this. We'll make a little game out of it and see what I can figure out and what I actually understand of what's being said here. Anything I miss, use the comment section below and add to the discussion. We can have a good laugh, but also maybe learn something in the process. And I fully expect that we're going to see the earliest yet reference to he showing up. If you're not familiar with what that means... I'll put some links to the other Star of Harv reactions I've done. It's something lighthearted. It's something fun. We'll get back to some serious history again tomorrow. Don't worry. Uh, in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to Stephen Parker in the UK uh, and Casey Wood in Florida. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. Let's go ahead and dive into this one. I took Wikipedia's timeline of Roman history and ran it through Google Translate using languages with the worst translation quality. This was the result. 753 BC, according to Roman history, Rome was built. Romulus was the founder. But was it built in a day? If you've ever, if you're not familiar with that phrase, Rome wasn't built in a day, it's basically a way of describing that anything that is strong and long lasting takes time and it doesn't happen overnight. And the first king of Rome, the founder of the Roman Empire. 752 BC, the Roman Emperor Romulus celebrates Rome's first victory since the Sabine invasion. The, the Roman Emperor. So we should acknowledge that the word empire technically has a specific definition, but we've, we've used it loosely. Uh, there are a lot of words that have a very specific technical definition, but then there's how it's used in kind of everyday parlance, right? Uh, you know, so talking about the Roman Empire... Uh, specifically, we should be referring to the period once Roman had emperors, which begins with Augustus, right? The adopted son of Julius Caesar. But a lot of times the Rom Roman Empire, when we're talking about it, really means any of that period of history where Rome has conquered a lot of territory. So there's the, the real definition and the way it tends to get used. Following year, he defeated Antimantus. <laughs> Who is Antimantus? 535. That's crazy that the mention of a praying mantis, and I know I'm pausing a lot here, you, you don't typically see praying mantises, manti, I don't know, in the wild, but I had one on my porch yesterday. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Yeah, I took a picture of it. There was a praying mantis on my porch. It was crazy. When they mate, the female bites the head off of the male. Infer from that what you will. 5 BC. He was in front of the enemy. He! he Servius there he is. killed Tullius. 508 BC, Etruscan War. Rome did not win. Rome did not win. BC, until the judge decides, the ambassador spoke to the Senate about the reign of Sabinus. Choose the top driver. 496. <laughs> Wait, let's go back and see who's in that picture. About the reign of Sabinus. Choose the top. A lion. British, Cleopatra, Agrippa, who was a, a general, uh, Hadrian, Roman, Steve, Caesar. Uh, so by the time we're getting to this period in, in Rome, and I don't know a ton about the Roman Republic era as much as I do about the, the, the AD part of Rome. Um, those certain families, those influential and powerful families are starting to develop already. Uh, right, the the families that are going to be famous later uh, for some of the the great uh, well known members of Roman history. Top driver, four nine six BC, Battle of Songyang Lake. Latinos attacked Frascati and planted a feet Latinos, tarp in the yes. great. Four seven one BC, there was a demonstration in the court. Civil law applies. 549 BC, you Four, five, are nine. an adult. 447 BC, what? this forum has been announced for three times in his career. 445 BC, can an answer, a king can marry a commoner. 443 BC, Cincinnati should pass a new law to replace the old one. So Cincinnati is named after a, uh, a Roman uh, in 
he was someone, if I understand right, who very famously um, had kind of almost dictatorial powers, but then gave it up and went back to civilian life. And so was a real model for George Washington, for example. And, and there was actually a military so society of the Cincinnati that was set up that you had to be uh, a Revolutionary War veteran uh, or the direct descendant of one in order to be able to be a part of it. It is better to maintain the father's mental health. He asked who was the king of wisdom. Civilius Acre Milius attacked the cavalry to protect the Aurelians. He hated the Nazi army and returned home after 21 days. It's nice to know that even in ancient Rome, he was going after the Nazis. 390 BC, Aryan War. 367 BC, again... Wait. Was that the man with the funny mustache on the Leonardo DiCaprio meme? 390 BC, Aryan War. I don't even know how to feel about that, but it's really well done. <laughs> uh, so the Aryans, the idea of Aryans goes back way before that guy. Uh... That's all I'll say about that. 367 BC, again, I went to the Consulate General. 366 BC, the first consul was Publius Sexius. Sexius. 337 BC, yes. he is the first player. Wow, this is his first playthrough, okay. Although somehow he already knows about the Nazis. 2,000 years later, 300 BC, Ogoni Law was passed to deny citizenship. 287 BC, on the other hand, the internet has problems. Individual differences. They're right about that. 267 BC, you are looking for numbers between 4 and 10. You are. 238 BC, war mercenaries. Catherine White. He took Sardinia and Corsica to Rome. 228 BC, after Ardio, he was taken to Rome during the... Illyrian War. He's making a lot of appearances here, so we're finally going to start getting into the part of Rome where I might actually know a little something, so I apologize if I'm not adding a ton of context so far. We have glass windows. 218 BC, the Carthaginian army left Carthage during World War II. Two so that's a fascinating time in history because that's a, a one of those kind of turning point moments, right, where Carthage and Rome were both kind of growing up together almost and and there's these clashes that are happening and there are times where if a few things had gone differently maybe carthage becomes the the mediterranean power uh and dominates rome and maybe we're not talking about a roman empire we're talking about the great carthaginian empire that spread from africa into southern <laughs> europe uh and changed history and how does history look different if that happens 14 bc first macedonian war Antelope captures Macedonian ships. 201 BC, Second Punic War. Carthage defeats Rome and signs a peace treaty. Speaking of Punic Wars, hey, uh, oversimplified. When are we getting some more? You know, it's been what? It's It's got to be a year since we've had an oversimplified video, right? What is going on? 10,000 tons of military equipment was provided. Philip stopped fighting. 200 BC, both. 197 BC, he established provinces and cities of Spain. 180 BC, annual laws of Wales. The minimum age and seniority of participating parents is two. <laughs> what is going on in Wales, bro? 121 BC, Narbonne's wound was healed. 102 BC. Hey, Wales, I'm coming early next year. Be watching for me. The, the war between Rome and Rome was a tragic victory for the Teutonic and Umbrian Teutonic? Fight. Now we're and talking about, about, like, up into Germany and Poland, aren't we? About 9 million soldiers and civilians were killed. Jesus. 101 BC, Battle of Versailles. Zimbri defeated the Roman invasion of Italy. He and King Bogolius killed thousands of Cumbrian soldiers and civilians. 71 BC, Battle 3. Roman Battle slaves three. are defeated on the banks of the Seine. 50 BC, Battle of France. The French Revolution is finally victorious. Wow, there's Robespierre with laser eyes. So now we're getting into the time when Julius Caesar's coming on the scene and he's going to uh, conquer Gaul and uh, just some of the most brilliant military campaigns in history. 
And if you're not sure, just ask Julius Caesar because he wrote about all of them. Uh, and we've done some videos on that before. It's absolutely brilliant. It really is. And Julius Caesar has to be in any conversation about the greatest military leaders of all time. 30 BC, the last battle of the Roman Republic. Antony's army was defeated by Augustus. I and that's true. So um, Antony and Augustus, and, and listen... It, well, I, I'll stop short of a absolute recommendation because there's a lot of like less than necessary parts to the uh, HBO series Rome, and it should have lasted a lot more than two seasons. Um, it really was fantastic and one of the most brilliant parts of the uh, series. And there, there's some incredible performances. Um, Kieran Hines as Julius Caesar was phenomenal. Uh, James Purifoy, though, as An as Mark Antony, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just kind of that perfect, he's kind of like the Tony Stark of ancient Rome, right? Um, but he plays that brilliantly, and, and they, they, they show a lot of that uh, kind of aftermath of Caesar, right? And, and Mark Antony and Octavian, who later would be Caesar Augustus, are kind of the legacy of Julius Caesar, Um Mark Antony was a close friend, a general that served under Julius Caesar, very loyal to him. Uh, Octavian is kind of his adopted son, who's kind of his legal heir. And eventually for a while, there's kind of this, there, there's fighting between them, but then there's this tenuous kind of alliance. And then eventually it all goes downhill. He saw death. <laughs> saw death. I can't believe it. 29 BC, there are many mosquitoes. 25 BC, <laughs> the past. So, uh, the Roman Empire... 2 AD. Oh, oh what L is going on? I thought I paused it. The Roman Empire uh, finally becomes a thing after the man we know as Caesar Augustus uh, defeats all of his enemies, right? In particular, Mark Antony is kind of the, the, the last big one. Um, but he kind of puts everything under his feet and turns Rome from a republic into an empire, and he becomes the first emperor of Rome. L. Caesar died suddenly. L. Caesar? Huge alpha team Caesar. AD 14, he died on Friday. Now that, I think, AD 14's probably, that should be when Augustus dies, right? And then Tiberius becomes the new Caesar. 40 AD, Ptolemy Mauritanius visited Rome, but Caligula, who was plotting a new plan against the Roman that Empire, guy was assassinated by Edmund. For Edmund, what'd you do that for? So Caligula, I think, is actually a a nickname. It means little boots. It wasn't his name. I think his name was like Gaius Germanicus Caesar or something like that. Um, but, you know, famously, he makes a horse into a senator and all this kind of stuff, and he gets assassinated like a lot of Roman emperors did. Um Definitely some mental health issues going on there. And there seems to be kind of a specific point in his life that you can point to as where he kind of went off the deep end. Uh, but he also had a pretty difficult upbringing. Uh, there's a lot to that story. 41 AD, Caligula was assassinated by Centurion Cassius Sharia. 46 AD, Ulysses III assassinated the Roman so, ruler. Is that, that's Ulysses Grant III. So he is actually, he, he's a grandson of Ulysses S. Grant, the Civil War general, American president. Um, his father was Frederick Dent Grant, who himself was a major general. And holy cow, if you ever look at a picture of Frederick Dent Grant, he's like a twin of his father. It's a lot like my son Caleb is with me. Um, but Ulysses S. Grant III is a, a staff officer during World War I. He ends up a colonel, I think, in World War I. Um, is in charge of the homeland defense of the United States during World War II. I think he ends up a major general himself. Lomitus. 49 AD, he married Claudius Agrippina, the youngest daughter of Germanicus. 50 AD, Claudius took Nero. Uh. 54 AD... He was assassinated by King Claudius Nero. So if there's anything we know about Nero, it's that he had no trouble with killing people, so I'm not surprised that he is one of the first to kill he. 58 AD, Roman Revolution. Roman army invades Armenia 6. 
in the favour of the Holy Father. Oh my Tigranius, God! Tigranius, Armenian Pope. presidential candidate, and Tiridates, I.A. Armenian bishop. So the the Pope um, is there's a lot of history there, and we've talked about a little bit of, of that history, right? Um, you know, that's kind of the intertwining of Roman culture with uh, with Christianity. Uh, and that that title, uh, Pontifex Max, or uh, Max, I think that's what it is. Um, let me take a look. Yeah, so Pontifex Maximus was a title that was given to one of the chief priests within uh, the Roman pantheon of gods, and um, was actually later adopted, much later, I think, just within the, maybe the last five or six hundred years, adopted by the Catholic Church as one of the titles for the Pope. Sixty-one A.D. Battle of Watling Street. About 80,000 Irish soldiers and citizens were killed in the West Midlands. Not in the West Midlands! No, that's where my family's from. Boudicca rebelled. 64 AD. So Boudicca is this uh, fascinating story that I'm surprised there hasn't been like a major big budget movie made about her. Uh, but I believe she is buried... Like they believe that she's buried under like a train station or something in London? I don't know. For six days, there was a great fire in Rome. Rome was destroyed in a great fire. Loss of life and property. 68 AD, Nero hides from Faunus, only to find that he has been declared an enemy of the state by the Senate. Then he decided and ordered to destroy everything. And you know, honestly, this is really where Rome starts to go downhill is when they become this empire, right? With emperors. Because... This, I mean, there's always been a, a, a level of infighting and intrigue and duplicity going on with the Senate and the Republic and all of that. But honestly, Rome's best times were when there was a Republic and there was a better series of checks and balances. By the time you get into the, uh, the time of emperors, the checks and balances are basically just kill the emperor and start over again and whoever else comes to power and it's just this series of murders and reprisals and uh incompetence and it's brutal father ordered to kill aphrodite no 71 ad rome defeated england rome defeated scotland not really <laughs> 77 ad julius agricola ambassador of the united kingdom 80 AD, Rome is burning. The Colosseum was completed. 81 AD, Tito died of fever. No! Follow, Brother Dominic. 85 Follow, Brother Dominic. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description as well to uh, the trip that we're taking to Rome and Florence. Still got, I think, seven spots available for that. If you want to check it out and read a little bit about it. And we're actually going to stay or two a day or two after the official trip and go down to Pompeii as well. So I'm excited about that. My first trip to Italy. 5 AD. Agrippa is a Roman name. 117 AD. It is. Battle of Titus. The Romans captured Rodom and the rebel stronghold. He killed many people. 118 AD. Hadrian was the king of Armenia, in addition to Assyria and Mesopotamia. Return your property. 132. Bar Kokhba Rebellion. Simon Bar Kokhba rose up against the Roman Empire in Judea. Believe that your people are Christ. 165. So the word Christ uh, is, if you hear Jesus Christ, Christ is just the, the Christos. It's the Greek word for Messiah, which is uh, Savior. Um but a lot of people, of course, uh, the, the prophecies about uh, Messiah go back to like the book of Isaiah and other places. And I won't get into all of it, but we're talking, you know, six, seven, eight hundred years before Jesus. And, and so by the time of the Roman Empire, it's very natural. It's very natural for people to take things that are religious or spiritual in nature and apply them to their very real political situations right and that's always happened and it happened in rome the people of uh, first century century judea uh palestine israel however you want to look at it on the map um were under the boot of the roman empire they're being taxed they feel like their um their rights are being trampled all that sort of things and uh and so they're looking to a messiah as someone who's going to deliver them politically from rome 
And uh, so that was a very natural thing for them to see that that's what they were being saved from. Five. Anthony, malaria, malaria, and plague killed about five million people in the Roman Empire. 194, the army of Septimus Severus captured the black hole. The black hole of it. 197, lion walls. 212, Antonius Caracalla's constitution granted Roman citizenship to all free citizens within the boundaries of the Roman Empire. That's actually a pretty big deal uh, because now I don't know how it was in 212 AD, but a few centuries before this, uh, so I'm sure it was still probably the case. Uh, Roman citizenship was a big, big deal because there were certain rights you had as an actual citizen of the Roman Empire that you didn't have if you were just someone living in the Roman Empire. Uh, certain rights, rights that we take for granted as Americans, for example, or whatever country you're a part of. Whereas, imagine if I, as an American citizen, had certain constitutional rights, but the person le living next door to me, who's living on my same street, who works in my community, who pays taxes, who does all those things, doesn't have those same rights uh, to things like a, a fair trial or you know, certain uh, protections under the law, that kind of stuff. Gypsy women have equal rights in the state. 222, he killed the Archon Heliogabalus. What in the world does toilet paper have to do with any of this? But let's just uh, take a moment and acknowledge that the toilet paper is placed properly on this roll here. You people that have it coming from the underneath part, the backwards part, you're a bunch of heathens, and honestly... I don't know what's wrong with you. And captured Severus. I am related to Alexandra of Rome. 275. He was killed by priest. Array. Not again. 283. The brother of the deceased. 284. I will die. This got dark. <laughs> 296. Huge rebellion. The victory of Caliph Atabad was contained and killed. 301. Diocletian was the most powerful emperor. The prices of most goods were fixed and, and fixed. fixed. 325, Nika's first rebellion. Nika admits that she made Constantine Emperor Nika because Jesus is her father. <laughs> so, uh, Constantine is actually in uh, the Roman city of Eboricum when he is declared emperor. Uh, and, and we've talked some about this. This was a time in history where Rome has basically four emperors. You basically have a senior emperor and a junior emperor in both the West and the East. And there was a certain kind of understanding about when a senior emperor died, the junior emperor would kind of move up and kind of like a president and vice president sort of thing. And Constantine's kind of bypassing all of that, and he'll eventually kind of become the emperor. But he's in Aboricum, which is today the city of York. Uh, where that happens, and there's a beautiful statue right out front of York Minster. I did a short video from there, where he uh, uh, on the spot where that is supposed to have happened. Three five four, France is dead. No, even before it was born. Three seventy six, the Goths defended themselves against the TV attack led by Fritzen and avoided political opposition in the Eastern Danube Kingdom. 378, the Goths and the Alans defeated the Roman army. So it's kind of cool to look at, at, by the time you're getting into this period where we're, you know, in the, in the fourth century, you're starting to see the early development of some of these nations that are still in existence today in Europe. Uh, these tribes that go back even many centuries before this, but by this point, you're starting to see those identities as the Roman Empire is fraying and starting to kind of rip at the seams. East of Adrianopolis, dead lag. 382, Gothic War. After the Thracian War, the Roman Republic became the Goths. Give freedom to my people. 406, yes, nationalism and violence against other nations. <laughs> Take the Western Roman Empire across the Rhine. Yes. 405, Theodosi Matos died in a car accident. Did he now? 456. The Civil War began. His grandfather, Rissimo, and Marion had to leave Rome. And then 457. My grandfather died. No! 533. Battle of Destruction. 
Byzantine forces under Belisarius retreat into the Vandal Empire. Belisarius. 534, beginning of the war. Gilmore ended the war by accepting the surrender of Belize. And Belize? <laughs> Belize, all the way down in uh, Central America. I've been to Belize. It's a beautiful place. It's a treaty. Vandals have territory in Africa. 337, Sophie. Fresh me law. 358. Me law. My name is Justin. Matt. 607, Fox Augustus receives the ball from Fox Roma. 634, finally he turned his back on the island and headed for the old town of Raston. 640, Muslims conquered Egypt. Rasidun's army besieged Peru. Wow, impressive. How did he get all the way over that? 730, at this time, Basil III announced the end of religion in Syria. 843, Theodora, Queen of Byzantium, is mentioned in the false religion. It is the end. The Byzantine Empire has fallen. Billions must cry. 1018, Bulgaria defeated the Byzantines when the young Bulgarians declared their independence from the old emperor. His name is Bulgarian. 1124, <laughs> beginning of the Green War, 2. 1126, the Green War ended when the blue ships destroyed the Greek coast and overthrew the king. <laughs> These, like, primary colours. 1127, attack in the southern Philippines. Attack in the southern Philippines. 1129, data is rejected. 1130. Oh, we missed an opportunity there to show data from Star Trek. 9. Ivan II became king of Antioch. 1143. Second Ivan dies. His death is the beginning, the beginning of, of violence. violence. 1185. S and St. Petersburg. Bulgaria versus Paris. 1347. Basil the Great ruled Tsar John for 10 years. 1453. Battle of Constantinople. Why do we keep showing Joe Biden randomly in this? Roman forces enter Constantinople. Vasiliev 11, death of Constantine. Paleogius. Rome has fallen. Fallen. That'll do. But fallen? All right. That was fun. It's always uh, an interesting thing to kind of dive into some of that. But uh, I want to give a shout out to Dominic Lanzilata and Daniel Ryrie. Thank you both so much for your support on Patreon. Check out some of the links down in the description of the video that I mentioned earlier. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.